Hello my charmed ones and welcome back to my channel for another video. So in today's video I am going to talk to you guys about why I track the moon cycles in my planner. Now some of you guys already know about this which is why it was a very requested video um, but if you are not aware something that I like to track in my planner are the cycles of the moon. And I have spoken briefly about this in like a planner setup video that I made last year but a lot of you guys wanted me to make this video and kind of make it a dedicated video, so here goes. So in my planner, I like to track when there is a full moon and a new moon. I don't necessarily track like the other phases of the moon. These are the two phases that I'm most interested in for the purposes of tracking and understanding my menstrual cycle, fertility, and reproductive health. So that is what the rest of this video is going to be about. So if that's TMI for you, feel free to pass on this one. But if you are interested in this topic, let's dive in. So full disclosure on this, I'm not currently trying to conceive, but as a woman who does want to one day perhaps conceive a child and I am at now a certain age where sometimes conception can be a little bit more difficult, I've become much more interested in my cycle and my reproductive health now than I ever have been in the past. So you're probably wondering then, what does the moon cycle have to do with our reproductive health? Well, actually, it has a lot to do with it, not in a directly measurable way, but actually in an indirect way due to the role that the moon plays traditionally in our hormonal cycles. So I guess the crux of the matter here has to do with the fact that our bodies produce a hormone known as melatonin. And you may be familiar with melatonin. It's the hormone in the body that controls our cicada rhythm, which is our sleep-awake cycle. However, melatonin also plays a role in other cycles in our bodies, like our reproductive hormones. So this is how melatonin traditionally works in our body. Melatonin production kicks off in our bodies at about dusk, when the sun is going down and there is a visible reduction in light. So melatonin essentially keeps ramping itself up the darker and darker that it gets outside and it makes us sleepier and sleepier so that we go to sleep at night when it is dark it keeps us asleep overnight and then in the early morning hours as the sun is rising the levels of melatonin in our system start to taper off and we wake up naturally in the morning when the sun is shining so our personal melatonin production is tied to the amount of light that's in the sky this is an important point to keep in mind, so remember that melatonin in our bodies is tied to the amount of light there is in the sky. Now, some science and research has shown that the higher melatonin is in a woman's body specifically, the more fertile she may actually be. And because of this correlation, some women who struggle with fertility or are undergoing fertility treatments are sometimes encouraged to use melatonin as a supplement. Now, what does this have to do with the moon? Well, traditionally, as in before the advent of modern lighting in homes, the darkest nights of the month would be the nights around the new moon. A new moon, if you aren't aware, is where there is actually no moon visible in the sky. So those nights would be darker than nights where there was a full moon, which is when the moon is completely whole in the sky. And those nights tend to be a little brighter than in a new moon phase. Now, again, traditionally speaking, there is a belief, we can call it an old wives tale, if you will, that if a woman is actually menstruating with the new moon, it means that she is more likely to conceive. And if research into the role of melatonin in our system is any sort of an indicator, I would say that this is one of those old wives tales that might have some real scientific backing as to why it works because new moon means it's a darker night, meaning that there is more melatonin in our body because again, melatonin production is directly correlated with the amount of light in the sky. And as we said before, melatonin may play a role in fertility for some women. So a darker night because of the new moon means that you might have more melatonin in your system, which means you might be more fertile during that time. Now, of course, because we have modern lighting in our homes and our work and basically in all the buildings that we go into in the evening time, this can actually end up throwing off our personal melatonin production and throw off our circadian rhythms, making it harder for us to sleep and sometimes wreaking havoc on our hormonal cycles as well. So for this reason, I personally prefer not to use the light in my home as much as possible once it becomes dusk. Once it starts becoming dark outside, 
I don't like to use lights. And I know that might seem a little funny, like I'm shunning modern conveniences, but unless I really need to use the lights for a task, uh, once it becomes dark outside, I try not to turn any of the bright lights on in my home. I'll stick to like lamp light or candles to sort of just make do in the evening times because I want to make sure that my body isn't getting like mixed signals and the melatonin in my body is being produced the way it should be before I go to sleep. And actually, very interestingly, what I found by doing this is that my menstrual cycle has actually begun to regulate itself. Now, I know this might be a little TMI, this is like personal information, but I used to have a menstrual cycle that was much longer than the average 28 day cycle. It could go on for like 35 to 40 days if I wasn't on birth control, which is a really long time if you think about it, if we're supposed to be using the 28 day marker as like an average for women. Now, it's not unusual for women to have, you know, a cycle that is longer or shorter than 28 days, but mine was what I would say a little bit longer than it really maybe should be. So essentially a few years ago when I made this switch to not using the lights in my home in the evening times, my cycle ended up regulating itself and now I have very close to a 28 day cycle which is interesting. So I personally like to track the moon cycle because I'm interested in seeing how the moon interacts with my personal menstrual cycle. And I feel like I've learned a lot about myself and my personal energy cycles from keeping track of all of this. Interestingly, it seems that for me personally, during the spring and summer, when the days are longer, like there's much more daylight time, I end up menstruating with the new moon, but in darker months of the year, my cycle starts to switch to menstruating with the full moon. So I think this might have something to do with like the juxtaposition of light and dark, that in maybe the days of the year where there is more light, my body senses the darkness at night more, or perhaps in the winter months, I end up using more light in my home and it throws off my melatonin production. So who knows, but I actually find it interesting to kind of keep track of this information. So that is why I personally track the moon cycles in my planner. Obviously, I also track my menstrual cycle as well. And for me, it's just a way to better understand myself and my health and the natural cycles of my body. Of course, I usually use my astrological planning stickers to track my moon phases and other astrological transits in my planner. If you would like that printable sticker set, I will leave a link down below to my shop where you can purchase it. I hope it helps you to track your health better if this is something that you're interested in trying for yourself. So I hope this video has been enlightening to you. If it has, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. I absolutely love this topic of understanding how our natural cycles in our body are influenced by like the natural world around us. So if you have any other examples of this or if you know of any other research or or sorts of old wives tales that also have to do with this. I always think that although old wives tales really are like anecdotal evidence based, um, I think there's a reason that they've been passed on through generations because I think there might be some grain of truth in them. So I love like researching those and finding out what's truth and what's fiction and what really is, you know, historically passed down, you know, wisdom throughout the ages. So I'd love to continue the conversation with you about those topics down in the comments. So let me know your thoughts. If you want more of the behind the scenes of my productivity life and business, make sure you're following me on Instagram at Miss Trenchcoat. And if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button for more awesome videos by me. And until next time, bye-bye!